when it comes to digital transformation, yeah, it's, it's, let's call it a double-edged sword. On one hand, we have this upfront investment, and you and I, we both know, without investment, there is no return on investment. So there's a prerequisite for that. Hello, I'm your host, Effie Pilarino, and today I have the pleasure to finally connect with a digital colleague, Mike Flash. Let me welcome you, Mike. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. Thank you, Effie. It's a pleasure to be here today on your show. Yeah, we, we are friends uh, on Twitter and on, on LinkedIn, <laughs> and, and today we connect. Um, I'm very excited you are a, a very well recognized uh, digital transformation uh, expert for the lack of the word or agent uh, or on a mission to help businesses in different industries in these journeys that continue as technologies, business models, values, culture, everything is changing. So many things are changing, so many technologies are affecting um, yeah. our economic activity and, and our societies. I think it's important to say that you are based in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, it, which we all know is a top uh, industrial uh, country. Uh, for me, you know, in fintech, it's also a country with several fintech hubs. Um, and over the past at least 10 years, we've seen uh, great companies come out of uh, Germany. And today, I hope we go together on, on a journey to see what we can learn about the digital transformation that you have seen in manufacturing, things that have already happened, others that are in the pipeline, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, others that are in the future, but, you know, the future is closer than, than we <laughs> Yeah, right. And what can we in financial services learn from this? So, mm. and I hope that we have the opportunity when we speak to to um, talk a bit also about your journey and, and your experiences. So mm. are you are you ready to sail? <laughs> of course I'm ready, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> so so what would you say, where shall we start? What kind of concepts from manufacturing, mm -hmm. financial services, sort of, mm -hmm. what can they learn from the digital transformations mm -hmm. that you have seen and or are on the mm -hmm. way? That's a, that's a good question, Ify. Um, It's not so easy to answer because I'm not a fan of, let's call it, a generic answers because each industry has its own challenges, has its own opportunities, and but they're also common common aspects. Yeah, one aspect when it comes to the technology side, it's the automation aspect. Another aspect is what we recently talked about is AI, of course, machine learning, and everything uh, that is involved. So. Um, when we think about smart manufacturing, of course, this is more uh, related to the production industry. So from this first thinking, it's totally different compared to finance. So but uh, on an abstract level, I think there are, there are a lot of similarities. Yeah, as a, let's go a little bit deeper when it comes to one aspect of automation. Um, of course, automation can streamline processes, reduce costs. We all know this. Um, but I, what I most love is, is uh, that automation also improves the accuracy. This means, think about when we go a step further to AI or to machine learning and everything that comes into in the future that is based on AI, we need accurate uh, data. We need complete data. And automation can help uh, to improve this accuracy. And this means on one hand, um, well, let's keep it simple for data entry. So employees uh, do not need the, the data uh, themselves anymore. 
um, when it comes to document processing, uh, on the other hand. So it frees up a lot of time for employees to focus on, let's call it more important tasks, strategic trust to drive the company further, to drive their department further, may it be sales, may it be uh, HR, may it be whatever, it doesn't matter. So it is very helpful. And this is for me a similarity that is across, or is a span across uh, financial and manufacturing. And um, I already mentioned it, data analytics and AI, of course, in these days, it's a hot topic. Sometimes it's a little bit too much when it comes to buzzwords. I'm sorry, I don't like this talking about AI here, AI there is too much for me. So bring it down to earth. As if if it's a newborn and, you know, it's been around so many years. And uh, I mean, financial services have been using machine learning and AI yeah. for, for long, but of course, now we are all excited with Gen AI and and, and all that yeah. stuff. And, and we're using the term, the, these umbrella terms for everything, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this and this is a good key term that you use, umbrella topic. So we, we put it uh, over everything. And this is, from my experience, not the case. So we have to go into detail and to see where AI or the, the certain type of AI is really helpful and drives a value. And again, let's transfer from the manufacturing industry uh, to financial. Um, on an abstract level, it's easy. AI helps us in manufacturing to operate or to make this or to yeah, this decision-making process in real time based on real-time operations. And this is what we can transfer as well, from my opinion, to the financial sector. And this helps then, of course, not only to streamline processes, but to predict the market in a better way, to get to gain insights into the market, into customer behavior, analyzing patterns um, regarding f- uh, fraud detection uh, and so on. So, and this is what I see when it comes to an abstract. You said fraud or fault? Sorry? (laughs) You said fraud or fault detection? Because fraud. 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 (laughs) It's not easy to spell, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because fault fault detection is quality control in manufacturing, you know, and uh, in financial services, it's, I guess, Part of it is fraud, but it, it could also be fault. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, I mean fraud uh, detection. But I'm sure you are the real expert in this area. <laughs> so maybe give me your your opinion when it comes to the fraud detection, for example. You know, um, quality control in manufacturing, and I'm not a, a, an expert. Obviously, is something that's been, you know, to be improved through mm-hmm. processes and all these new technologies, be it uh, automation, be it sensors, they're trying to improve that. So so the analogy here is how can a financial services provider obtain data that is helpful to, to their customer that At the end of the day, when you go to to a financial service provider, Mm -hmm. it's a means to an end. You go for a loan or you go Mm -hmm. for payment, right? You're Mm -hmm. you're buying something. You go for loan for credit. Mm -hmm. Why? What is it? Are you buying a house? Are you buying a car? Are Mm -hmm. you building a business? So how can that provider help with data much before you end up going to the checkout counter mm-hmm. to that that sort of a transaction. Mm-hmm. So that's the analogy. How can we put sensors? How can we get that data through open, I don't know, open banking or partnerships mm-hmm. or, or, or the, the right way to get that data, right? Um, mm-hmm. And alternative data sources have been around a lot in analyzing companies, right? You get satellite images and different um, types of alternative data that helps financial institutions do their job 
be it the job of rating a company, evaluating it as an investment, mm -hmm. looking at it from a credit worthiness point mm -hmm. of view. Um, so, so there's these, but even in manufacturing, at the end, you manufacture something, it's part of a supply chain and a process. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's money there. Uh, there's money that is moving, right? Yeah. It's an asset. It's yeah. an asset that is moving. It has value. You could get credit on it. Uh, you know, payment delays is an issue. So, mm -hmm. so it's very intertwined. I guess finance is intertwined with the real economy, right? It's not mm -hmm. the real economy is is what we care about. Finance is kind of supporting the real economic mm -hmm. activity, mm -hmm. and what it, as I said, it's it's a means to to, to it, we're trying to accomplish yeah. something. Yeah. So in in that sense, um, we're similar. So, do we want five G? Do we want six G? How is that going to help? financial services mm -hmm. um, in, for example, evaluating credit worthiness across the supply chain. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, or if we think of, of money today, money is data. So why is it different than mm -hmm. any other type of data? Of course, it's regulated, mm -hmm. but I think the big as you said, at the high level, the big idea is that the real economy should be connected theoretically in a seamless, frictionless way mm -hmm. with um, financial services because they are an enabler. And I think examples mm -hmm. abide in, in supply chain situations where... Um, you know, invoicing, getting paid, getting credit, all all yeah. those issues yeah. are are well understood to, uh, to to everybody, and there's frictions. And if we think of cross border supply chains, it's huge. Mm -hmm. But even in manufacturing, at the B two B level, uh, you know, most economies, Germany also are export economies or import yeah. economies, right? Yeah. So so we have all these issues. Um, and from the experience that we have in financial services, um, we still have a lot of frictions and a lot of uh, uh, silos between the industries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Yes, the manufacturing sector, the, the companies work with financial services providers, but there's a lot of silos there and mm -hmm. a lot of frictions. Mm -hmm. And um, one big trend now that's emerging, which is um, embedded finance, mm -hmm. is something that um, finds a place and unlocks value in um in the manufacturing sector. But on the other hand, it's also a question of the digital transformation in financial services. What, what kind of experiences have you gone through or, or seen um, in, um, in financial services? What kind of KPIs you think financial service leaders, business leaders, C-suite are, um, I would say they they have blind spots there. They're mm -hmm. not, you know, paying enough attention to them. Okay. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I think there's a variety, there's a variety of different um different KPIs um that are not really in, that are not really in the in the center. As a, again, from one of my personal um uh, KPIs is of course it's driven to financial. It's the long term ROI. So um, 
Of course, we are in a, in a, in a fast-paced world. We need we live from quarter to quarter when it comes to business. Public. Yep. And of course, we are all responsible um, to be successful for all stakeholders, to drive the business further, to drive it sustainably further. This is not the question. But we know when it comes to digital transformation, um, yeah, it's, it's, let's call it a double-edged sword. On one hand, we have this upfront investment, and you and I, we both know, without investment, Investment, there is no return on investment. So there's a prerequisite for that. On the other hand, of course, we have this from quarter to quarter and the facts and figures have to be right. Let's call it this way. And this is this could be a gap. Yeah, This could be a gap, especially when it comes to these uh, short-term goals. So when you implement digital transformation initiatives, this is the reason why it's so important uh, to have this look at the quick wins to keep the stakeholders, and I mean all stakeholders, satisfied. Otherwise, they lose the trust, they lose the excitement of that, and all of a sudden we are going more backwards than forwards. I've experienced this many times, yeah? and there was not, and for example, a company invested or allocated a significant amount for the budget and for the digital transformation initiative, but what I saw, it was more a back and forth like a beer was dancing around the fire. And I said to myself, so is this really the case? Of course, implementing technology, and we see a lot of technology in the manufacturing industry as well as in other industries. But on the other hand, let's come down to the significant part. And this is the what is about the value creation. Implementing technology is not enough. You mentioned this earlier. Technology is a means to an end to create this added value. And in my experience, and I, I'm not, sorry, I'm not so experienced in the financial industry uh, like you, but I see a common, a common challenge across many industries. And this is um, clearly asking where is the added value? How can we create the added value through digital transformation? or through technology or through innovation uh, uh, related to processes or even new business models. This question sounds so simple, but my experience is it is not clearly enough asked by the management in many cases. I'm not sure. What is your experience uh, when it comes to this I mean, we, we have multiple examples uh, of this uh, uh, you know, uh, rather I would say we have uh, uh, casualties of, uh, you know, major budgets. Um, uh, a recent one with uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, who had this big vision um, and, and actually started um, uh, launching a substantial consumer banking arm because before basically Goldman Sachs was what we call a more um, a non-retail rather than inst serving institutional uh, clients. Yeah. And, and they started that. Marcus is the brand. They started from, you know, a, an account, a card, um, loans, depending on the jurisdictions and so on. To make a long story short, we had um, a couple of years, two or three years, that this was going on. And finally, uh, recently it was shut down because leadership had to um, give, if you want, um, um, to the jury, to the stakeholders, the explanation why up to now they had already lost $3 billion in this endeavor. So the return on investment was not there yet, mm -hmm. right? And I say that because we all know so many examples of big tech businesses like Amazon that was publicly traded unprofitable for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a question of leadership, of commitment. When, mm -hmm. And this is an the example I gave you is a case of um, a well-established publicly traded uh, financial services company taking a leap to launch a new kind of business vertical that they were not in, right? But but there's many other 
examples. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, many other examples. I, I I think of them all the initiatives that have gone to the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I mean, we all know that many startups fail and that's yeah. reasonable and so on. But if we look, I don't think anybody has a, a list, but there are, you know, there's yeah. a lot of them, of those that are from, especially from incumbents launching big initiatives and then closing them down um, because they don't work uh, for several reasons. Very often it's cultural integrations, cultural, you know, clashes within the company. Yeah. And, um, and quite frankly, they're not measuring the same KPIs as the startups, right? Mm -hmm. Or the, the innovators that have scaled. But now we are in a phase where, you know, we don't have the abundant VC funding and, and the, the fat valuations. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very difficult even for the grown-up fintechs to, if you want, um, maintain their business if they're not showing some uh, road to profitability. So yeah. growth and KPIs and, yeah. you know, that are typical in the innovation sector don't cut it. That that is for sure. So so we are in that era, uh, and I don't want to uh, uh, paint a, a, a disappointing picture, but that is the the situation. But we continue to innovate, maybe more at the early stage. Mm -hmm. Because it's easier, it's cheaper yeah, to do that. And then that also pushes everybody uh, to transform, to mm -hmm. continue the transformation. Mm -hmm. So, and this transformation might be slower now. I don't know. What is your yeah. um, this is a good. This is a good point. This is a good point. Uh, on one hand, <laughs> uh, a question came to my mind is uh, after what uh, or why you were explaining that isn't that good or bad and uh, i said to myself okay slowing down doesn't mean that is bad or speeding up doesn't mean it's good or vice versa uh, in the end it's all about i come back to the to the same point value creation and everything should should be from my point of view focused on value creation and some branches some sectors some areas need more time others are faster in the end again if you are fast of course you fail fast we all know these phrases and makes sense when it comes to a certain point that you say okay you want to get to a certain point uh, very quick and you need a result or you need the feedback then fail fast uh, is an approach on the other hand um, getting slower to a certain result isn't bad from my point of view. Sometimes it's even more helpful because think about, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, so you came back to the cultural fit when it comes to integrate a company through an M&A or whatever. Um, and then it clashes. Yeah, Is this better to drive this fast forward or is it better to do it a little bit slower but more on a substantial level? And we both know what is the acquisition worse when it doesn't pay off in the future, it doesn't work at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that 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 is um, the situation. Um, Mike, recently you you've been uh, talking about um, some of the misunderstandings uh, around um, uh, integrating sustainability into business practices, mm -hmm. and you know this. Well, of course, in manufacturing, it's a bigger issue, but also in, in the services uh, sector, like financial services, it's mm -hmm. a major um, issue. Uh, um, so what is your thinking there? What are the misunderstandings that are floating around out there around um, how to integrate sustainability in the digital transformation mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. 
I was, it's again a good question, Ify. It's really not easy to answer, but in my head, I have so many different phrases now. Um, and I guess one, no, 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 I guess I'm convinced about one, one key issue or one key misunderstanding is that digital transformation is inherently sustainable. This sounds maybe weird, but think about it. On one hand, of course, digital transformation helps to reduce paperwork, for example, or helps to reduce travel on the on the other hand, because we all know this from the COVID area, the, yeah. the, the meetings uh, that uh, take place virtually. On the other hand, when it comes to AI and we think a little bit further, the huge amount of data that comes together and has to be stored and analyzed in data centers. So these data centers, on the other hand, could be very energy consuming. And this means we cannot just say, oh, let's put everything from the analog world, means paper or traveling to the digital world, and then everything is sustainable. This is what I mean. Digital transformation is not inherently sustainable. We have to keep an eye and understand first the impact what digital transformation has on, a, on sustainability means, for example, data centers and energy consumption, and then how we can balance this so that we really drive the things further into, yeah, to consider all the facts of the environment, the business itself, and the people. Otherwise, it's a calculation that, that cannot pay off in the end, yeah? We just, in the worst case, we just transfer from analog to digital, but we produce even more things that are not really sustainable. So this is the, one of the biggest misunderstandings that I see, and I actually have in my discussions on the table. Yeah. So, so yeah, because everybody, what you're saying is that it's not even, they, they, most leaders are not even thinking about it. They're thinking that digital transformation means for sure sustainability, and that's not yeah. the case. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's not the case. Yeah, it could be the case, but there are so many parameters and factors and aspects. Leadership has to be aware of it. It's no no need to to have a deep understanding, but I have to understand uh, the bigger picture to make the right decisions. Compared to AI, means I cannot make informed decision based of based on bad data, and this is here the same. If I don't have the real understanding from from the overall, it's hard to make the right decisions when it comes to sustainability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and there's many examples, especially in the real economy with um, electric vehicles, with the batteries, with mm -hmm. the internet of things and, mm -hmm. and all the sensors and just, you know, um, we are shifting from one item to, uh, to another. Um, yeah item you know our mobile life that depends on our yeah. smartphones that yeah. uh, cook says that we have to change yeah. them every year <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a new fintech service that says okay you know buy now pay later oh, yeah, you yeah. know and buy five phones this christmas right <laughs> yeah. This is... You know, everything comes when opportunities facing us or when we are moving towards opportunities, we're always moving towards risk or challenges. Yeah. And to I think I think in, in our decade and with the other decades that are that are in front of us or ahead of us, one of the major issues is to balance these things. Right? We live in a complex world, the things are more intertwined. So on the other hand, to have this overall understanding and bring them together to balance them in the, in an optimal way. This is not easy, but it's necessary. Otherwise, it won't work from my experience. Yeah, and complexity is increasing. Mm -hmm. And um, I find that um, it makes it much more difficult for us human beings and, and small businesses to really make the right choices because mm -hmm. you know you you think you're doing one thing right but then you're doing another thing uh, <laughs> wrong right yeah. uh, you know too much online shopping what's all that transport you know just uh, it, it gets complex absolutely, yeah. there's, absolutely there's no doubt about it hey mike 
before we close, I want to ask you, I know that you're writing uh, a book. Tell us a bit about <laughs> uh, um, your your book and what it's all about. Ah, okay, good. So, of course, uh, I'm, I'm happy to do this. Uh, first and foremost, the book is not about digital transformation. It is, let's call it, influenced by digital transformation. It's a, a, a tr transformational aspect, but it's more about personal growth. And um, the title is Rising Up Again, and this topic is close to my heart because we spoke a little bit earlier about it. We live in a decade of uh, uncertainty, we have so many challenges on the desk, and uh, especially the last five years showed us everything is possible that we uh, that we haven't expected. So on the other hand, there's much much to come. And rising up again is is about is a book for everyone who wants to master the biggest challenges and create a fulfilling life. And this sounds easy and sounds oh yes I want this, but it's it's hard to achieve. You mentioned this earlier. We live in a complex world. To manage everything and to get everything balanced is hard. So and I wrote about my experience in my from my last fifty years when it came uh, to my soccer career as a teenager, and this was all of a sudden over because of an accident or took part in the tsunami in 2004 in the Indian Ocean, almost 20 years ago, a long time, but it had it has still a massive impact on my decision-making, for example. And um, yeah, to overcome these experiences, these impacts in life, and how to make the most out of it in a positive way to create businesses, to create a fulfilling life, or even on the private side, this is what uh, the book is all about, and uh, just sharing my personal experience. I'm not a guru. I'm not uh, a psychologist. I'm just sharing what I've experienced, and that's it. Yeah, but Mike, this is uh, extremely valuable and interesting. I was at um, the Cyprus FinTech Summit uh, in, the, I think it was September 1st, um, and mm -hmm. um, there was a panel towards the end of the summit around... Um, mental health for entrepreneurs okay uh, and um it was just an amazing uh, panel and it resonated with everybody and most of us in the audience uh, we were agreeing and sort of unanimously saying that this type of panel needs to move to the center of the conference not on the edges of the conference okay. So, so I'm noticing a shift um, in communities um, that are around innovation, right? Because where I go, the conference that I go, whether they are fintech or blockchain or this, it's they're around innovation. Of course, there's incumbents, but mm -hmm. they're all interested in transformation. They're all yeah. interested in how to deal with change, how to deal yeah. with challenges. And at the end of the day, I think the challenges are very common, uh, mm -hmm. both for the incumbents yeah. and for those that are innovating. They're all trying to push an agenda to make a successful business to keep up with all the changes, with all the challenges, and everybody is doing that. Uh, but they're not only business people, they are individuals. And as mm -hmm. I love to 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 say, it, you know, there's no such distinction. We bring our personal life and we had the opportunity to relax a bit with COVID. I think that was one yeah. of the blessings. We became a little bit more human treating each other, right? Yeah. Instead of going to meetings and with our public, professional, corporate, whatever persona yeah. and nothing else. And, and we became more human. So I think this is extremely important and topics that everybody cares um, about because, um, you know, even somebody that hasn't had the experience of a, a tsunami, which is a physical one, tsunami, maybe mm -hmm. they've had a, mm -hmm. a professional tsunami mm -hmm. and, and another type of emotional tsunami mm -hmm. that feels to them 
the same as how it felt to you um, yeah. to, to experience that. Uh, so uh, I think that it is very much connected to transformation, you know, the physical, the digital, the, yeah. the, the physical and the emotional um, well-being. And um, I like to say for the holidays, you know, whatever you wish, you know, the first is health, but health is not only physical, it's also mm -hmm. mental, right? And, Absolutely. And mental, yeah, and mental is very broad um, in itself, too. So, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Yuffie.